This is the Anarchist Words on Entry number 28, and I'm here to talk about Thanksgiving. And I know many of you are going to be meeting up with your friends and family today to celebrate around the table this annual tradition of eating a turkey and having this uncomfortable conversation about anarchy, right? That's you. And I'm going to help you out by having some conversational starters about maybe the origins of Thanksgiving. Because remember, when they talk about your family or friends who are not into anarchy is like, well, I don't want to talk about politics. This reminds them that anarchy is not a political position. So that's great. Neither do I. <laughs> and so great place to start is uh, remembering that people like to equate the Thanksgiving thing with massacring Indians as if these were peaceful people themselves. That is patently false. The American Indians coming from Asia, settling in North and in South America, uh, were also murderous uh, tribes of status. And that they also did a lot of enslavement. They also engaged in a lot of organized murder, war. They also had human sacrifice. They also had forced tribute, aka taxation. So when the European status counterparts came here in the Americas, it was easy for them to conquer them, only in that they had already been practicing this form of slave master relationship. So cultural hegemony is easy then to take place and take root. And so Another thing I wanted to spell as well, another fun one would be the uh, smallpox blanket in that the idea is that this, this was a military strategy, a tactic to kind of pass out to a lot of um, American Indians here. It never happened. That's also another lie. A lot of lies out there, especially through uh, Hollywood medias and movies and stuff like that. It's this bunch of lies, lies, lies. But I'm here today to tell you the truth. And I discussed about the origins of Thanksgiving two years ago and a Liberate RVA Cows episode, which I'll link right here. And it's always fun to talk about, always fun to bring up around this time of year as well. And that when you had a lot of people coming in the Americas and settling all along the coastline, you had Jamestown not that far from Richmond, you had uh, the Plymouth Colony uh, coming from the Mayflower. And that one in particular is interesting in that in the very beginning, they established a socialist economic system in which each person would do work and take the harvest from that work according to their need. And I believe the phrase is to each according to his ability, then to each according to their need. And that everything that you would create and produce and build and harvest and, uh, and hunt, you'll put it all in this common area and people will come out there and just take what you needed, right? And that did not work, as you can imagine. Um, we've all seen the Halloween video of like this, uh, the hamburger clump coming in and seeing this uh, tray of candies and just, just kind of takes and puts it on her bag and then runs away. Or if you've ever gone to school and have to work one of those uh, uh, group projects and there's that one person that always slacks off and doesn't do his particular amount of contribution and you have to take the extra slack to make up for that because you all would get the same grade. Uh, that's the sort of thing that happened except the outcome of this wasn't a, an F or a bad grade. It was death, famine. Uh, and so that's what happened in the first couple of years. In 16, 21, 22, there was a lot of starvation. There was a lot of people dying. And it wasn't this uh, miraculous, hey, we're encountering American Indians, and now we're going to trade. It was just the people just killing themselves because of socialism. It wasn't until the governor, William Bradford, came in and said, okay, this is not working out at all. Um, you, you're going to have this plot of land. This here, right here, we're going to demarcate it. This is your land. You, that is your land. I'm going to create property rights. Uh, trade whatever you want after you produce and build and grow. Uh, that's ours. That's all yours to, to do. And from that, from establishing property rights, they stopped dying. <laughs> the famine ceased to continue. Uh, the following year, they finally did have enough to carry their mouth through throughout the winter. Uh, the year after that, in 1624, they had enough to finally export some of these goods. Imagine that, capitalism, uh, saving uh, these people from being decimated <laughs> through their ignorance, uh, through by socialism. And so that is the origin of many of these colonies and many of these settlers, especially in Jamestown as well. Uh, and all of them, the common denominator, why all these uh, colonies were failing was because of socialism. And it wasn't until they removed that aspect of it and instilled property rights that they finally were able to bounce back. Uh, and of course today they celebrate Thanksgiving, but it was celebrated in many other colonies, maybe even in uh, Spanish Florida, uh, maybe some parts in the, the European world as well. But we celebrate it on this particular day because Lincoln, the tyrant, uh, nationalized it during the war between the tax slaves of the North and South. And his 
reason was to kind of, you know, create a bonding. Hey, we got things to be thankful for, thankful for your government, right? Um, but really, it was just to kind of create this uh, false feel good notion that things are going to be hunky dory, things are working out. Uh, we have the rule of law, things are peaceful when everything was nothing like that at all. You had Lincoln <laughs> imprisoning tens of thousands of people for daring to speak out against them, Northerners. Uh, for writing things bad about his government, suspending habeas, habeas corpus. You had the, uh, the soldiers after the Gettysburg battle sent him off to New York City so he can, they can murder hundreds of people writing and protesting against the, the draft. Uh, this guy was not a benevolent uh, ruler as so many history textbooks would want to believe. He was a ruthless dictator. And that false sense of propaganda is what created the uh, nationalizing, what the states were already doing and celebrating Thanksgiving to one centralized day, today the 24th, which has carried on through um, today. <laughs> and that's why we do this. And that's why it carries on and people don't recognize or understand the history of where these things come from. It's like 1984 and all these uh, indoctrination camp textbooks are just rewriting the history over and over again until we forget whatever happened. And while many people will be celebrating um, Thanksgiving and, you know, trying to find a good conversation to start it, this is one to pick up on. Um, me, myself, I'm thankful for my friends and family, for, uh, for my Liberate tribe, for the anarchist friends that I have, heat close and afar. And I'm thankful for the upcoming season three of Rick and Morty. <laughs> I'm thankful for my supporters, especially my Patreon ones. I'm thankful for, especially um, for the millions and millions of people out there today that are pursuing their self-interest and creating this division of labor through the market so that I do not have to capture that turkey and package that turkey and transport it and I don't have to stock the shelves with eggnogs. So I don't have to forge my kitchen knives and utensils. I'm grateful and thankful for, for that market process that occurs today. I'm thankful for what's left of capitalism. I'm thankful for the early settlers realizing how socialism was just gonna drive them all off into the ground, into the mass graveyards, and for them to kind of pick up on that and change really quickly. And I'm thankful for you guys today as well. Uh, keep spreading anarchy, stay liberated, and I'll see you at the Victory Party. Enjoy your Liberty Harvest.